standing next to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, Sidam Karen. This morning, we also like to learn another new song. So this is how the song goes. So I say, Mokozi wetu Yesu bwana wa mabwana Mokozi wetu Yesu bwana wa mabwana Let's try that again So I say Mokozi wetu Yesu bwana wa mabwana Mokozi wetu Yesu bwana wa mabwana Unaweza nani kama wewe bwana wa mabwana Let's try that one more time Mokozi wetu Yesu bwana wa mabwana Mokozi wetu Yesu bwana wa mabwana Unaweza nani kama wewe bwana wa mabwana Let's sing together
for Jesus. For he is able to do all things. Say, hey, Buana. Hey, Buana. Above all other things.
mercy, oh God, you remain the same. Hey. Come on, just worship him, just worship him, just worship him. forever faithful the Bible tells us that Lord you are the same yesterday you are the same today and you are the same forevermore though men change God you are unchanging we declare that you are our Lord we declare that we love to praise you we love to worship you we love to sing adoration to you because Lord you are seated on the throne my father we thank you king of all that glory we worship you because Lord you are magnified in our midst of this moment dear brethren we stand before the Lord who has known us understood us stood by us we stand before the father who created us who understands everything that we could be going through and this hour of intercession. In this congregation, in our nation, in the household of faith, there are wars without, there are fears within, because this world is not a friend to the grace of God. The 
this moment, we want to thank God for the work of ministry that has gone on through the week. We had our members out on a mission to Kericho. We had our ex cans in a mission to Kilifi. They are all back in safety. We let us raise this thanksgiving unto the Lord. Father, we bless your name this morning. Thank you for the victories of this week in the work of ministry. We want to exalt you and praise you for enabling our people in this particular church to go out as you commanded in Mark 16. Thank you, Lord, for the souls that were won. Thank you for every word of encouragement that came from our people's, your people's mouth and encouraged somebody lost somewhere. Thank you, Lord, for the enablement of the Holy Spirit. And we pray, Lord, even for other planned missions, move with us, Lord, and glorify yourself. We stand here thankful for the rains, Lord. They have come in season, and we exalt your name. We are praying this morning, Lord, that these rains will do what it came to do. We are praying that you will save our people, especially in the flood-prone areas, where mudslides, Lord, happen in this nation where rivers swell and block roads. Father, we are praying that you will preserve this nation in this time of the rains, in this long rains season. We pray, Lord, that you will even provide to us our daily bread as the farmers plant, as they prepare, Lord, for a harvest. Father, we pray that you will cancel the work of canker worms and the locusts. And our farmers will have food to offer to the Kenyan community. Father, we pray that you will protect us and provide for us in this season. In our hearts, we'll be grateful to you. Our Lord, we come because they are sick among us. And as we raise before the Lord, Betty, Munani's um, father who is unwell. I'm sure my brothers, you know many, many more. You have left some in your households. Some of your people are in hospitals. And some of you are right here with us. Father, we raise the unwell before you, Lord. Whoever is in pain, Jesus Christ died to heal us. The stripes that he was given on the cross, that was the purpose the Bible declares for us. So Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you will come and meet us at that point of healing that our people require. We thank you for those whom we have prayed in Sunday's past. And they are today with us because you have touched them. We bless your mighty name. May you continue to do the work of healing. We pray for this specific father who is in hospital. Arise, Lord. Arise, Lord. Arise, Lord. And may this father be healed in Jesus' name. Father, we come because there are those of us who are bereaved. Brethren, there was an accident. Some of us are here who are directly affected by that accident. Brethren, let us raise our sister Nora Kaitani before the eyes of the Lord. Father, we raise Nora. We pray that you will visit her in a mighty way in this particular moment of tears and pain and confusion. 
even when the dark of night has fallen to this family, may you be found real in our sister's life. Father, come. Come, Lord, and do a great work of healing, a great work of comfort. Wipe the tears, Lord. Revive the spirit of our sister and her children and her people. And as the barrier plans are being made, manifest, manifest your peace in the name of Jesus. We continue to pray for the KDF family, many of whom even come to our church. They are members here. And we raise them to you, Lord, as they go through this loss. Do a miracle, Lord, of comforting, reassuring, and encouraging. Father, we are praying that you will do what man can never do in the hearts of our defense forces. In this moment, we want to raise the authority of the Kenya defense forces. We raise our president before you, Lord. We feel it. How much more does he feel the heat for us, Lord, as a nation? We raise him to you, believing you are able to do abundantly above what we can pray for him this Sunday. We pray for this nation, Lord. In this period of mourning, comfort us and give us strength to wait upon your name. Father, for the household of faith, Many people are gathered in houses of worship this morning. Many are holding crusades. Many are in their houses. Many are in churches. Wherever, Lord, not has been raised for you. We pray in the name of Jesus that you will be found faithful. That your presence will sanctify the worship of your people by your presence. And may every need in the household of faith be met. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Why don't we celebrate the Lord, Sitam Karen? Amen. Would you, would you turn to the person next to you and just invite them to church this morning? Say hi and tell them, welcome to church. Amen. Amen. As we take our seats and appreciate our worship team. Thank you. Thank you, worship team, for a wonderful ministry that you do in the house of the Lord. May the Lord bless you exceedingly. Good morning, Sitam Karen. I can't hear you. Good morning, Sitam Karen. Welcome to church today. We are glad that you came to church. It is always a joy to be in the house of the Lord and to fellowship together. I want to welcome a very special group of people, our online viewers from wherever you are all around the world and from whatever platform you are watching us from. We want to welcome you to join our service today. We also pray that uh, you will find time one of these Sundays to just come and join us in person. Amen. I want to take this chance, Sitam Karen, and recognize another special group of people, our first time visitors. If you are visiting Sitam Karen for the first time, I want you to let us know by just standing on your feet and we shall just celebrate you and appreciate you. You're visiting. Wow. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much on the balcony. Okay. Thank you. I can see the young man over there. Kindly remain standing. Our ushers are coming to you with a gift from Sitam Karen. And uh, inside that gift, there is a welcome card. Kindly ensure that you fill the spaces that are on that welcome card and uh, you'll hand it over after the service. I want also to uh, find out from our visitors, 
that uh, are you here and you are looking for a church? It's your first time at Sitam Karen and you're looking for a church. Sitam Karen, what do we tell them? What do we tell our visitors? Your search for a church has come to a blessed end. Perchance you were just passing by and you attended our service today. We want to send you back to your home church with greetings and our regards from Sitam Karen. The Lord bless you. Boys and girls, are you in the house? Boys and girls, are you in the house? I want to invite you to be upstanding, boys and girls, together with your facilitators and teachers as I pray for you and release you for your service. Let us pray. Our Father and God, we thank you for your love and kindness and faithfulness. Thank you for these many children that you have given us today and many facilitators and teachers that are faithful in their work of instructing our children. We pray for both of them that, Lord, you may help them, the teachers and the, the children, that, Lord, as they go to their service, you'll give them understanding and that you'll bless them. In Jesus' name we pray. Boys and girls, remember to carry money for Jesus. Amen. At this point, I'd like to invite the media team to kindly roll down the announcements for today. Media team. On one evening, while Jesus was having the Passover meal, this was just around the Passover season, the Bible says that he got up from the meal, he went and took a towel, wrapped it around himself, took a basin of water, then went down on his feet and he began to wash the disciples' feet. And when he had finished, he looked at them and he said that they will be blessed if they will go ahead and do likewise. We are called to go and serve one another. That is the example that Jesus set on that day. Here at Sitam Karen, in the month of May, we'll be having what we are calling, what we are referring to as the Kingdom Service Month. And what is going to be happening in the Kingdom Service Month? We're going to be coming around in this church and we're going to be doing some things to make this compound clean, to make this compound look lovely. We are going to trim some trees, we are going to clean some trenches, we are going to paint some places, we are going to organize some other places, we are going to repair the places that are broken in the house of God. Just sign up for a certain activity as we'll be guided. And we'll be challenging every ministry in the church, actually every one of us in the church, to find something that you can do, something unique, something different, something you've never done before. Now, Sitam Karen, this is exciting. Sitam Karen is our church, and we want to be able to serve one another, we want to be a blessing one to another in very practical ways. Let us come and build the walls of the house of God. Come, let us do some service and make Sitam Karen a glorious place to the glory of God. God bless you as we serve one another. We have embarked on a generosity initiative that we do believe over the next two years will help us to settle 23 of our Sitam assemblies in permanent residences. And we also do believe that over the last two weeks, you and your family have been praying together on what the Lord would lay in your heart so that you become part and parcel of this journey that together in Sitam we are walking. Now, each and every one of us can participate and we do urge every member of SITAM to participate, whether adult or youth or that no one be left behind as we move together in generosity. Some of us indeed can give much more than the 50,000 that we used as an example last time, 
some of us might only be able to manage a little less than that. But whatever it is uh, that each of us would make a commitment uh, that we are going to move together, not just 25,000 people, but every member of SITAM engaged in this initiative. Therefore, as we look ahead, today we are giving you a chance to make a commitment. And this commitment will be led through an app that we do believe will help each and every one of us both to track our giving and also to know how we are giving as individuals so that we are not left behind. Thank you for being part of the Together in Generosity campaign. A special downloadable app has been created to facilitate the process of registering your pledge and tracking your giving entirely from your mobile device. The registration process is simple. Once you've downloaded the app, follow the screen prompts to enter your name, your phone number, and your email address. Press Next and find your CTAM assembly in the drop-down menu. Create and confirm password and register. Next, select a monetary or in-kind pledge. Enter an amount and choose the redemption details. Don't forget to choose reminder options by SMS or email. Confirm your pledge and reminder details. You will receive a confirmation message by SMS on the phone number you provided. There are various ways to redeem your pledge in the app. Select an installment amount and a convenient date each month on which you wish to be reminded to redeem your pledge. When you're ready to redeem the pledge or part of it, press Redeem and select one of the payment options provided, M-Pesa, PayPal, bank transfer, etc. Type in the amount and press redeem. Follow the prompts to finish the payment. You will receive notification that your payment has been received. Download the app today. It's available in the Apple Store for iOS users and in Google Play Store for Android users. Name of the app is Sitam Church. Greetings and welcome to Sitam Karen, where Christ is the answer. We have just come from an amazing youth festival and having attended it, I would say it was such a blessing. So here is what we have for you today. The youth ministry invites all high schoolers for a nature and prayer walk happening on the 27th of April, 2024 from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Cost is 999 Kenyan shillings, payable through pay bill number 933941. Account name is Teens Walk, followed by the name of the teen. All high schoolers are welcome. The counseling ministry is glad to announce the intake for basics for Christian counseling course 2024 third cohort. All who are interested should register at the information desk. Deadline is 5th May 2024. That's all we had in store for you today. But just a quick reminder on our service times. We have our early bird service, which begins from 7.30 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. 
Our first service, which starts from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Our second service, which starts from 11.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. We also have our teen service, which starts from 11.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. every Sunday, except the first Sunday of the month. On Wednesdays, we have our early morning prayers from 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. via Zoom, and the link is recurring. The same Wednesday, we have our in-person service from 5.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. here at the main sanctuary. And with that, we have come to the end of our announcements. But for more information, kindly follow us on our various social media platforms at Sitam Karen. And with that, we are done. Blessed week. Amen. Let us appreciate the media team. Now we have uh, bands of marriage here. Uh, we are pleased to announce the reading of the bands of marriage between Collins Muduya Vita and Zifros Minayo. Their wedding will be on, on Saturday, 27th April, 2024, from 11 a.m. at Sitam Karen. If you have any just reason why these two should not be joined together in holy matrimony, kindly see the senior pastor before the wedding date or forever hold your peace. We are also pleased to announce the reading of the bands of marriage between Tony Mola and Dorothy Timona. Their wedding will be on Saturday, 5th of May, 2024, from 10 a.m. at Sitam Karen. If you have any just reason why these two should not be joined together in holy matrimony, kindly see the senior pastor before the wedding date or forever hold your peace. Sitam Karen, it is time to give. Yes, here at Christ is the Answer Ministries. We believe that we also worship our living God through the giving of our material blessings. So allow me to uh, pray for our tithes and offerings, as I also pray for our senior pastor who will come and bring to us the word. The media team will play the clip for giving, and then immediately after the worship team will give us as special as we give. Before I pray, I forgot to give some nice secret to our first time visitors that after the service, actually the protocol team, our welcome team will be waiting for you at our visitors lounge on my right. It's actually on your left. In there, we have uh, a special cup of tea brewed the sitam current way, and I'm sure you will enjoy it. So there is a member of the protocol team, the young man over there lifting up his hand. He will be waiting for you after the service so that he can uh, show you around. Allow me to pray. Our Father in God, we come once again to you with the giving of our tithes and our offerings. We ask King of all the glory, that as we give, you may bless us, O Lord. That as we obey the call and the command to give our tithes, Lord, you shall bless our houses and our storehouses. You shall bless our families and our children, O Lord. We ask, King of all the glory, as we are faithful, as we are faithful in giving our offerings, Lord, may you also, Lord, continue to sustain us. We thank you, Lord, for our senior pastor who is bringing to us the word this morning. We pray that you give him divine utterance, O oh Lord, and that, Lord, you give each one of us here at Sitam Karen expectant hearts, that, Lord, we may be hungry for the word, and that, Lord, when he speaks, he shall speak as one who is led and instructed by you. We thank you, Lord, and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My name is Shadrach Andibo. I have been your moderator for today. Thank you. Here at
Karen, we have different ways of giving. You can simply drop hard cash in the offering baskets or pay electronically via our M-Pesa Payable number 933941 and the account name is Tithe, Offering or Thanksgiving. You can also swipe your MasterCard or Visa card on our PDQ machines at the main exits or by reaching out to our ushers dressed in red jackets. And last but not least, you can draw a check in favor of Christ is the Answer Ministries and indicate Karen at the back of the check. Giving is part and parcel of our worship experience. Give praise to the living God. Give to the living God. Amen. Yes, for today I'm not I'm not gonna be your moderator. My name is Michael. And I'm with this team right here. It's called Foot 7. We are a band. Praise be to the living God. Amen. Yes. Amen. And so today we have been privileged to give a special. And honestly, we're excited as I hope that you guys will be. So may it be a blessing to you. It's a common song. But if you know it, kindly sing along with us, yes? All right.
and shout to Jesus. I give another clap for Fort Seven. Thank you, guys. Yeah. That is a boys' band called Fort Seven. Yeah, you guys are good. Men and uh, good morning. Masikia baridi. Some of you look like you carried your blankets, you know. But it's great to be in the house of the Lord, um, just a few things that uh, uh, we need to address ourselves to before we go to the ministry of the word, uh, just to, I, I was, you may have noticed I was not here last Sunday, um, I was out in uh, ministry in Mombasa, uh, not in our church there, but just ministry in a different church. Uh, so I was preaching from Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, every one of those days uh, until I came back. And then yesterday, I early morning flight to Mars a bit, went and did, officiated the wedding of one of our pastors and then came back in the evening. Uh, but God's grace is sufficient. I'm still alive. I'm still here. Amen. So maybe look. So look at the person next to you. Otherwise, <laughs> otherwise, you know. Only some people from a certain region in this country know how to respond to that. You know. Um, just to again uh, remind us, uh, just uh, the announcement that we have been running for the past couple of weeks about the Together in Generosity campaign, uh, that uh, we want to continue encouraging you to give your pledge. If you have not yet downloaded the app, uh, you can actually be able to do so in case you're having trouble. You can actually just get help from our, our information desk. They'll be able to assist you. And remember, there is no amount that is too small you know, just begin somewhere, but we want to be able to raise a, a substantial amount of money, you know, so that we can be able to settle uh, more than 20 assemblies that need to be settled in permanent sanctuaries. Some of them need their own land and what have you. Uh, so we still, need, we still need your participation for you to be part of that. In fact, uh, let me just see how many have pledged so far. The app will give you the number of people that have actually pledged so far across SITAM. So we have just, let me say 2,000, just a little over 2,700 people who have pledged, which means that uh, many, many more have not yet, because that is across SITAM, uh, being the kind of ministry that we are. And uh, so we need everyone to participate. Again, remember, no amount is too small, uh, but we need your participation uh, so that we can be able to make this thing happen. Allow me to just read to us the, this is the final reading of this notice of the Anno Delegates Conference. Notice is hereby given that the Anno Delegates Conference, that is the ADC of, for Crisis Answer Ministries, will be held on Saturday, 27th April, 2024, from 8.30 a.m. at Sitam Valley Road, Dennis White Hall. This shall be a hybrid meeting with members attending either in person or virtually through a Zoom link, which shall be circulated to the delegates prior to the meeting. All delegates are encouraged to attend in person. Again, just to reiterate, this is specifically for those of you who have been appointed delegates and those of you who have actually accepted that responsibility to, uh, to represent our assembly. The agenda, prayer and devotion, uh, reading of the notice convening the meeting, welcome and introduction of delegates, confirmation of minutes of the annual delegates conference handled on 29th April 2023, matters arising from the 29th April 2023 ADC meeting uh, minutes, uh, chairman's report and its adoption, consideration of the audited accounts for the year ended 31st December 2023, appointment of auditors for the ensuing year, election of deacon board members, ratification of appointed elders, 
any other business for which notice shall have been received by the church secretary at least seven days prior to the ADC. All AOBs to be sent to admin at sitam.org. Not by. All selected or elected, rather, delegates are invited and uh, expected to attend. And uh, secondly, CITAM audited accounts and yearly reports are available for perusal in the ADC document bundles circulated through the provided link. This has been signed. He was in his service by the chat secretary uh, and, uh, and, of course, secretary to the deacon board. That is our brother Martin Munu. So this is a final uh, notice. So the ADC is next next week on Saturday. So all the delegates, again, we will keep reminding you until that day because it is, it is critical that you represent the rest of us in the ADC. Uh, we had a wonderful time this past week. You may have seen the images on the, on, on, on the screen. We had from Thursday, Friday, um, actually Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, we had our young people. We had a youth festival, festival here, and uh, we had an excess of more than 1,200 young people gathering here for worship, the word, and they will be here from morning uh, all the way to the afternoon. We want to appreciate all the parents who sent your young people, all of you who supported us in one way or the other. This was a regional, it was a regional uh, youth festival, which means that it brought together all our uh, southern region churches, and what a great success it, it was. And uh, we hope to do this, to make it an annual thing, so that we can reach to the next generation. Can somebody help me to praise the Lord in this place? And on Friday, uh, we had many of them just fill this altar, uh, getting born again. And then after that, we, as pastors, we laid hands on many, many of them, hundreds of them, to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And you may have seen some of the images. These young people are hungry for a visitation of the Holy Spirit. Let's continue supporting them in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, just again to remind us, the Kingdom Service Month is coming up. We've seen that also. Just to put emphasis on that, Kingdom Service Month is in the month of May. And uh, please, for all the ministries or individuals, remember, we want everybody to participate. There will be a lot of work to be done here. You can see Pastor Steve. Who is Pastor Steve? Uh, he's, uh, he's somewhere, but you can see Pastor Steve for direction, uh, and he will be able to direct you some of the things that we want to be able to do in this compound, whether it's in here, the sanctuary, or in our compound. There's going to be a lot of work, so we need every one of us to participate, whether primarily, especially as ministries, ministries, but also you can also come and say, I want to do this as an individual uh, or a family, whatever the case may be, but all of us, uh, it will be necessary for us to do something. Amen. Well, we want to get into the word of the Lord in just a short while. Uh, we are in the second quarter of the year. Can you believe it? Okay, yes or no? <laughs> but we're in the second quarter of the year, which means that the, the year is actually moving by very fast. Uh, in the first quarter, we addressed ourselves, especially, uh, remember, we are still uh, trying to remain as faithful as possible to our theme for the year, which is taking new territories. And uh, one of the things we learned is that you cannot take new territories in your own power, in your own strength. It has to be through the power of the Holy Spirit. And we addressed ourselves, especially, uh, to the baptism, the power of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you shall become my witnesses, because what God calls calls us to do, we cannot do in our own strength. And in that first quarter, uh, we had shared this with us. If you may remember, uh, we had said uh, it will be a, an opportunity for us to experience the power of the Holy Spirit as we discover, as we discover new territories, as the Holy Spirit leads us and guides us. And in this quarter, we want to address ourselves to primarily the Great Commission, because once you have received the power of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit does not come, you know, to us or up, uh, among us or upon us just for us to be able to feel good. Unfortunately, and I've mentioned this many times, in our generation, in our culture, we are a very experiential people. We are a very sensual people. Whatever makes me feel good, it's all about what I feel when I feel it. Um, that's why people come to church sometimes and they're looking for an experience and, 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 and that's all we have become. People 
people who just want to have an experience. Even when they encounter the Holy Spirit, it's always just about an experience. What I feel on the inside or what I feel on the outside is always about a feeling. You know, it's amazing nowadays, everywhere that you go, especially when it comes to the church, uh, we have now what we call worship experiences, you know. But the worship experiences, a lot of times when people go to them, it's they want to feel something. You know, they, they, uh, whether it's a touch of the Lord, I don't know, but they want to actually feel something. They want to come and uh, because they enjoy the music. So it's all about experiencing. The problem with that kind of understanding is that then it makes the gospel all about us. It makes the faith all about us. It's about what I feel, me, myself, and I. But remember the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit came on the, on the day of Pentecost, it was not just so that the disciples would feel something and experience something. It was so that they would be dispatched into the rest of the world. Are, is anybody hearing me? The reason why, we, do you know why we come to church? We come to church as we worship, as we praise him, as we wait on him, as we receive the word so that at the end of the service, when you have been dismissed, you are dispatched where? Into the world so that you can go and be a light into the world. So that you can go and win the world for the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember we, uh, and I think we discovered this many times, that God's primary agenda for the church is that the world may know him is not so much that we may become comfortable in this life. The comforts that we receive, the blessings that we receive, are only supposed to enable us to become better witnesses. But they are not the primary focus. Is anybody still here? You are very quiet. Are you still in church? So in this quarter, we want to address ourselves to the Great Commission because that's why the Holy Spirit comes. We are baptizing the Holy Spirit so that we may fulfill the Great Commission. Uh, And according to Matthew chapter 28, the command was to go and make disciples. And we need to be faithful to the Great Commission. So today, I want to bring to us what I have entitled the sheep, the coin, and a son. Or a sheep, a coin, and a son. Are you still there? So turn with me to Luke chapter 15. Now Luke chapter 15, Luke chapter 15, we will find three stories there, or three parables as it were, that are just juxtaposed against one another. And uh, the, the three stories, or these three parables, have one primary theme in them, which you shall see in just a short while. And the theme is about lostness or the state of being lost. So you have in those three stories, the first parable is a parable of the lost sheep, then you have the parable of the lost coin, and then you have the parable of the lost son, or the prodigal son as we know it. And I want to, and I want to just pick up some, some, uh, some lessons from these three aspects of lostness, because the three, the three parables are there, of course, just to, to emphasize the fact of being lost, all right? However, through different lenses, through different lenses, and that's what we're going to be discovering. And of course, tied to that is our responsibility and our response to this state of being lost. So in Luke chapter 15, let's begin there uh, with the first one. In fact, before we read the first one, then we'll jump into it. Uh, Let me just say a few things about these three parables. Now, the first thing that you note that is similar to them is that in the three stories, in the three parables, something valuable is lost. In the first parable, it is a sheep that is lost, so much so that the shepherd leaves the 99 to go and looking for the one, the one sheep. The second story, a coin is lost. And this lady or this bride who loses this coin is valuable to her so much so that the Bible says that she sweeps her her house and lights a lamp so that she can find her lost coin. And then the third one is this son, this son who walks away from his father and asks for his inheritance and he goes away to a far far away land and and then after some time he comes back home. So something valuable, this son is also valuable to his father. So something valuable is lost. But then the second thing you need to note is that, is that in all these three stories is that the owner cares about the thing that is lost. The owner cares about the thing that is lost and in two of those cases actually sets out 
to look for that which was lost. So the first one, the sheep that was lost, because it means something to the owner, is valuable to the owner, the owner goes looking for his sheep. In the second instance, because the coin is important and is of value to the, to the bride, she sets out to look for her lost coin. It's only in the third story, uh, the, the parable of the lost son of the prodigal son. The son, the father doesn't necessarily go out looking for the son, but waits for the son to come back home. Then the third thing that you need to note is that in these three stories, that whatever was lost was found. Praise God. Are you, are you with me? And I, and I think that's, that's a point of hope. Whatever was found, the sheep is found, the coin is found, and the son is definitely also found because he comes back home. But then the fourth thing, the fourth similarity in this story is that when whatever was lost was found, there is great rejoicing. When whatever was found is, is, is restored back to the owner. So if we find the, 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 the shepherd rejoicing, invites his friends, the same thing with the bride who lost her coin, she rejoices when she finds this coin, and then also the father calls for a big party when the son comes, comes back home. So now let's, let's begin with the first one. Are you ready for the first one? So Luke chapter 15, the Bible says, now the tax collectors and sinners were together gathering around to hear Jesus. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. By the way, just pause over there. Isn't it a beautiful thing that Jesus welcomes sinners and eats with them? Come on, talk to me in this house. Don't be too quiet on me. Is it, that's why we are here, isn't it? Because he welcomes sinners. Do I have any sinners in the house? Then I'm in the wrong church if there are no sinners around here. But that's why we are here, because he welcomes sinners and he eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me. I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way, there will be rejoicing, more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. Now, I need to understand. So notice, uh, 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 as Jesus is giving this parable, obviously, I mean the interpretation, and obviously what he has in mind, he's, uh, he has in mind God's people. Because all across scripture, uh, Old Testament, uh, especially from the Old Testament, the picture of God's people is actually sheep. If you look at Psalm 100, Psalm 100 says that in verse 3, it says, know that the Lord is good, uh, is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people. The sheep of his pasture. John chapter 21, uh, verse 7, that the third time he said, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know things. You know that I love you. Then Jesus told him, feed my sheep. Well, do you think he was talking about sheep, meh? He was talking about feed my flock, isn't it? Isaiah 53, the Bible says, we all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. So across scripture, from the Old to the New Testament, as we've already observed, that God likens us to sheep. And now, this is quite interesting for me, because as people, uh, as human beings, we like to think of ourselves as sheep. <laughs> and I'll give you why. A lot of times, especially when you listen to a lot of motivational speakers, they like to liken us to lions. Horses, uh, eagles, you know, all those majestic animals. But I have news for you. Nowhere in scripture does the Lord liken you to a horse. Absolutely nowhere does he liken you um, to, to, to a lion. He's, a, he's the only one who is the lion of Judah, of the tribe of the lion of Judah. And the only time that he comes close to, to likening us to eagles is when he says that we will be renewed and we will soar like eagles. But everywhere else, he says that we are the sheep of his pasture. Now, uh, on the one hand, that doesn't flatter us at all. <laughs> are you with me? Why? Because sheep by nature are timid. Sheep by nature are weak. 
Uh, and, and worse still, sheep by nature are foolish. <laughs> but God says, I'm a, so look at the sheep next to you. That. I know today they don't look really their Sunday best, they look nice, but imagine that person is a sheep. Sheep, by the way, tend to wander off very easily. They are so easily distracted <laughs> that they end up wandering off into, into dangerous territory. Did you know that in Psalm 23, remember this is now um, David who was a shepherd. So if there's a guy who really understood about sheep, it must be David. So David is, is writing the famous, of course, the Lord is my shepherd, uh, Psalm. He says in verse 5 of Psalm 23, he says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And then he says, you anoint my head with oil. Remember, as he's writing this, he, his premise is, the Lord is my shepherd. So he's saying, I am a sheep. So he says, because, because he protects me and sets a table before me in the presence of my enemies, he anoints my head with oil. Do you know why shepherds would anoint the head of a sheep with oil? It's because is because sheep had a tendency of while they are out looking for food, remember in the wilderness, out in the wilderness where they don't have too much pasture, that sheep will end up uh, uh, sometimes trying to look for food or sh little shrubs in holes in the wilderness. The problem is that in those holes, it would have scorpions and serpents and all kinds of creepy crawlies and, and they would be in danger. And so you know what the shepherd will do? He will anoint. He will cover the head of the sheep with oil so that it becomes like a repellent against those things. Are you with me? Have you noticed that sometimes as sheep, God's sheep, we have a way of poking our noses in the wrong areas? And you know how he, he just protects us. He anoints us. Many of us, if not all of us who are here, the only reason we are still alive is because he anointed us. And protected us because the enemy has an agenda. So we are actually sheep. Now, sheep are foolish. Now, now understand. Let, let's just look at the sheep, the shepherd and his sheep. All right? Now, please note that the shepherd, even using this, uh, the, the parable, the shepherd cares for his sheep so dearly to the point of death that that. The shepherd, once he has secured the 99, he is willing to go for that one who disappeared somewhere in the wilderness at the risk of his own life. So he goes out looking for his lost sheep. But also the third thing, you also understand, the shepherd and the sheep, is that, is that the shepherd also disciplines his sheep. Now remember Psalm 51, when David had messed up, he had sinned against Jehovah. In Psalm 51 verse 8, now remember that Psalm of repentance and restoration that, he, that is recorded for us. So in verse 8 of Psalm 51, uh, this is what David says. David says, let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Now, to be able to understand that, you have to understand what the shepherd sometimes will do. So because the sheep, some of these sheep, have a tendency of always running off and wandering into the wilderness, sometimes the shepherd will pick the sheep that has that habit of running off into the wilderness. I don't know whether those, those kind of sheep came to church today. If you're, if you're like that, let me, let, me, let me see by a show of hand. Okay. You're not being honest. Because all of us, like sheep, have gone. <laughs> now, what he will do, he will pick that sheep that has a tendency of taking off and going to the wrong places, and he will break its leg. All right? Then, in the meantime, listen to this, interesting. In the meantime, why, of course, the, can you imagine this poor little lamb, this poor little sheep, and the, and the shepherd is breaking its leg, and the thing is wondering, why is this shepherd who loves me, why would he do this to me? And he's in pain, he's in agony. But for the next while, so then the, well, after he will break the leg, of course he will, uh, he will come and nurse that leg, and he will, he will kind of bandage it and put stilts on it so that it remains that. But for the next while, until that leg recovers, the shepherd will carry the sheep on his shoulder. 
You've seen those kind of images, have you? And you wonder where it comes from. It's because, so for the next while, as he's carrying this ship, the ship is recovering, all right? There's a, an image right there. As the ship is recovering, but guess what is happening? The ship and the ship create a bond. Are you with me? By the time the ship heals, that ship will never wander off again. <laughs> Isn't that what God does to us? Sometimes he breaks your, I'm not, not literally so, but sometimes you go through something because you had wandered off. Is there anybody here who can be honest enough and say, Pastor, uh, I have had my leg broken a time or two. But while you are hurting, while you're going through and wondering where is God, guess what? He's carrying you. He's saying, my son, my daughter, I know you're in pain. Yes, whatever you did was foolish, but I will carry you through this. And have you noticed that some of us will not love the Lord as much as we love him, we will not be as close or as intimate as we, we are to him today, if it were not for the pain that we have gone through. <laughs> because during that season, that's when we seek the Lord. It is during that season when we cry to him, when we want to draw close to him. And guess what? He's actually carrying us through the whole process. So the sheep also, the shepherd disciplines the sheep. That's why Jesus said uh, in John chapter 10 and verse 27 that, that my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I will give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. I am secure in the arms of my shepherd. Nobody can snatch you away once you have been bonded to the shepherd. Again, also, just using that, that analogy that, that the, his sheep know his voice. And the picture was that, that, that also a shepherd, every shepherd, now remember, when the shepherds at the end of the day, maybe I, had, I have 100 sheep, another person has 200 and whatever, at the end of the day, in the evening, all the shepherds, they could be 10, 20, they will bring all their sheep together in one fold. Obviously for protection, isn't it? You know, because you don't want, not, you don't have to have your old fold. So all of them will bring, I'll bring my heart, you'll bring your heart, and you'll, all of us, all the sheep will actually be in one fold, in one place, and they will be, obviously, uh, we will guide, make sure that they are, they, are, they are well protected through the night. So in the morning, so imagine you have hundreds of sheep all gathered in one place. And remember, these sheep are not very clever. All right? <laughs> so how does a shepherd separate his own flock from the rest? They say that a, that a good shepherd, while he's leading his sheep, will develop maybe a certain tune or a certain, uh, uh, um, a certain uh, whistle or something, a certain sound or a certain song. And whenever he wants to separate his sheep from the rest, he will begin maybe whistling that little tune that, that, that he knows or whether it's a little flute that he will have, whatever it will be. And because his sheep know his voice, when they hear, they would follow. Are you with me? And that is why Jesus says, my sheep know my voice. And that is why you and I, friends, must always be listening to the voice of the shepherd. Remember, and Jesus Christ even warns, that those who come not through the gate, but the ones who come and jump over the fence, those are robbers. And there are many robbers, spiritually speaking, in our time. And that is why you have to be careful. Listen to me, Sitam Karen, again. You have to be careful who you're listening to. <laughs> Listen to the voice of the shepherd. So please notice that for the sheep, like I've already said, sheep are vulnerable. So now going back to this story, now with that understanding, so this parable, so now it begins, we begin to understand something about, about sheep, that a sheep, because of its vulnerability, because a sheep is foolish. By the way, in fact, they tell me, that I've never had a sheep, I've never been a shepherd myself, but I'm, I'm told, I hear legends, I hear stories about, especially those of you who have experience, maybe having goats and sheep, that, 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 that goats are very clever. All right, as compared to sheep. So, so 
um, if, if, you have, if you have maybe a, a, a bunch of goods uh, with you, um, and, and, and you, you, you know, maybe you line them up and you're trying to slaughter them, that you, if you slaughter the first one, all right, in the, in, the, in, 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 the, in the presence of the rest, that that is the only one you will slaughter that day. The rest will take off. Am I right? But sheep, <laughs> I'm told the, the little guy will come, you will cut off its head, the next one will just come and you will just in obedience. <laughs> because they are so, it doesn't register. But goats, and no wonder, Jesus said, in the last day he will separate the sheep and the goats. <laughs> so I, oh, I was going to ask, are you a goat? But some of you I realize you'll you take offense. But he's in the business of transforming goats into sheep. Are you with me? But I want you to understand this. So sheep get lost, listen, because of their foolishness, of their timidity, because they get easily distracted. They get easily taken over by their own, by their own fleshly desires. That's why they get lost. And that is what happens also to us as God's people. Listen. That before we got born again, before we came to Christ, we were like sheep like has gone astray. Because sometimes we fell into sin, we found ourselves in a life of sin because of our foolish nature. Because we follow after, after our own fleshly desires. We are easily distracted. The world is full of people who have gone wayward, who are lost because of their own foolishness. Have you ever done something, friends? Have you ever found yourself maybe in a situation and you beat yourself over it and say, how could I have done that? Anybody who ever, you sinned against the Lord and you ask yourself, how could I have done that? I have, I have, I have an answer for you. Because you're a sheep. <laughs> and, and sometimes here, and here's the thing, sometimes, sometimes, even when we are born again, we, we still behave foolishly. Small wonder, you know, God has already made provision for us that even when I have fallen, even when I have messed up, that I can still come back to him because he's faithful and just to forgive us because of our foolishness. Do I have any young man, a young lady here who probably things have happened and you found yourself doing something and, 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 and today you're still beating yourself on the head saying, I knew better. How could I have done that foolishness is because we are sheep. And that is why the Apostle Paul advises us and says that if you see somebody in a sin, you who is spiritual, try to restore them, lest you also be tempted because we are sheep. So look at the sheep next to you and tell them there is hope. <laughs> so let's move on, moving on. So lostness, so notice, so the first one, so what does the shepherd do? Because of the lost sheep, he goes looking for the sheep. Our chief shepherd this morning is still looking for his lost sheep. There's still some lost sheep in the house of the Lord. Some of you who came to church today, you don't know Jesus Christ, you are still that lost sheep that he's looking for, and that is why you came to church, so that he may find you. He's still looking for lost sheep. And that is why as God's people, listen, as God's people, those of us who have been born again, we must participate in that responsibility of looking for lost sheep. We must become part and parcel of what God is doing in this culture and in this day and age. We must go out and look for the lost sheep. Let's move on to the next parable, the next story. So in verse 8, in verse 8, are you in verse 8 now? So in verse 8 now, we have the parable of the coin. 
Now, or suppose a woman has 10 silver coins and loses one. Doesn't she light a lamp, sweep the whole house and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, the, I tell you there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Notice, so sometimes when you read that parable, you'll be wondering, what's the big deal about a silver coin? isn't it? You, you begin to wonder, I mean, what's so big? What's so, I mean, how many of you have ever lost a coin in the house? You didn't even notice, isn't it? You know, because I mean, a coin is almost, I mean, it's just a small thing. It doesn't really mean, mean much. But I want you to understand, I think we're given now the context of this, is that, is that uh, the picture here, or, or the something because it is probably also a status symbol for this particular bride. Now, understand this, friends. Isaiah chapter 43, this is what the Bible says. Isaiah 43 verse 4, it says that since you are precious and honored my sight and because I love you, I will give people in exchange for you. In other words, listen, in this second aspect of lostness, that God views his people as valuable. There is value in people. Are you with me? Even the least of us in a culture and in a world that has a way of segregating people according maybe to your value or your status in society, yet when God looks at people, even the least, though that person who is somewhere in the back of beyond, he says, that person was worth for me to go on the cross for them. Ah, oh, you didn't hear me. Even a baby who is born and only lasts for a few minutes and dies off, that child is still valuable. Did you know that Jesus died, not just for the multitude, but he died for also for everyone individually? Why? Because the Bible says we are valuable. And if we begin to understand that human beings, human life is valuable, I think we'll treat one another differently. We will not be so judgmental, isn't it? We will treat with each other with, with some form of dignity and decorum and respect. 
Unfortunately, as human beings, we have a way of devaluing one another. We look down on one another sometimes. Oh, you're not in my class. Oh, you don't have as much money as I do. Oh, you don't belong to the right pedigree. Oh, you're illiterate. Oh, look at that person. They're in the streets. Even that child or that person who is in the streets and they're dirty, they're downtrodden. You will not want anything to do with them. You will not want to get near them. In God's sight, guess what? You are not more valuable than they are. Isn't that humbling, friends? And sometimes when you look at that, you begin to realize, if only it was not for God's grace, I would be that person. Oh. My goodness. How I pray that we can begin to see value in people. To realize that that person is so valuable that Jesus gave up his life for that person. So notice the coin is valuable. I want you to understand something. Just think with me for a while. This coin is valuable, but it is lost. Now, if you have a thousand shillings on you, and you lose that thousand shillings in the house, does the thousand shillings lose its worth or value? It is still valuable, only that it is lost. Which means I cannot benefit from its value until I find it. Ah. <laughs> and there are people who God wants to reap value out of. The problem, they are still lost. And guess who he's sending? Us, me, and you. Second thing, I want you to notice, so the coin has value, even though it's an inanimate object. But the second thing is this, that the coin is lost, notice, the coin is lost as a result, not of its own actions, but the result of actions, be it carelessness or neglect. The coin has no, has no choice in the matter. It, because it was in somebody else's hand. It's on a side. Yet it got lost. It's not lost. Not like the sheep that got lost because of foolishness. This one was lost by somebody. Listen to me. I've learned this. And I hope this will, will probably be informative, informative for all of us. That do you know, there are people today in this world, in our culture, in our country, around our neighborhoods who are lost, they are outside of Christ because of another person's actions. Maybe they were born, they were born outside of the church. Maybe they were born into a different religion. Maybe others who are indoctrinated. Some people today, listen to me, and, and I hope you'll, you'll understand what I'm talking about here, that some people are lost maybe because they were abused. <laughs> they were abused by somebody, a loved one, and they say, how can a good God allow this to happen to me, and they walked away from God. Lost, not so much because they wanted to, but because of the carelessness of another person. Oh. There are people, listen, listen to me. Today in this country, and in our times, we talk about, especially many of our people who now are being, are being um, enslaved by this whole LGBTQ movement, isn't it? And, and, and of course we know what the Bible says. We know our stand as God's people. But friends, can I challenge you? Some of those guys, some of those people did not find themselves there out of a choice of themselves. Some of them find themselves entrapped because they were abused by somebody. And they don't know how to get out of it. Oh, how I pray, how I ask, listen, listen. It is still our responsibility <laughs> to go and find them. You are very quiet up in here. They are not condemned. Ah, because he, Jesus Christ, still died for them. Are you, is anybody hearing me? Our, our, our times, we write people off and we devalue them. And we say, because you're like this, you're like that, there is no hope for you. 
How dare we? Who made you judge? And it's so easy to judge because, because you don't agree with them. But sometimes, sometimes we are so hard on people, yet we don't know their backstory. Maybe some of the things that they went through. Maybe the abuse that they went through. Maybe the neglect that they went through. Some of them were pushed into a corner. Some of our kids who have been indoctrinated by others. And today they are lost. Like that silver coin, they still have value. Yet they did not have, they had not much choice in the matter. But notice, the coin is found, notice how it is found. It is found through lighting a lamp and sweeping the house. Psalm 105, the Bible says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And that is why we must keep preaching to them the word of God. We must light the lamp of God. Listen, are you with me in this house? That's why we must keep proclaiming the word because the word is a lamp. Don't you know that God uses his word to light up people's lives? Suddenly somebody realizes, I am a sinner, but thank God there is hope for me. We cannot be quiet like you're quiet right now. We must keep, that's why I have to keep preaching. Wherever this gospel takes me, I will keep preaching. Let me tell you, my biggest joy this past week was to preach those kids right here at this altar on Friday morning. How many of them answer that altar called Pastor Ian? 27 of them, to see them, and we just gave them a few minutes to see those kids, and they were uh, all over this place, more than 1,200 of them, to see them just coming to the Lord, some of them in tears, just coming to Christ. And I say, this is what it is all about. Ah. See, because our young people are not looking for entertainment. Let the world do the entertaining. What they're looking for in the church is the word. Somebody to, to light a lamp for them. A lamp that says, you can be saved. You can be born again. Jesus can transform your life. Do I have anybody here? Somebody uh, lit a lamp for you. And that's why you're here today. Somebody cared enough to tell you Jesus loves you. Maybe it was even a stranger. See, I, I, I'll say this, that, that sometimes we, we are so condemning, too condemning, breaks my heart, too condemning of God's people, of young people especially. Let's light a lamp instead. Tell your neighbor, light a lamp. But I want you to notice something here. She lit a lamp, and, and what's the next thing she did? She swept her house. Notice. Now, something occurred to me. In Matthew chapter 12, the Bible says, notice, this is, this, is, this is Jesus speaking. He says, in verse 43 of Matthew 12, he says, an unclean spirit goes out of a man. He goes through dry places, seeking rest, and finds none. Verse 44. Then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, now notice, he finds it empty, swept and put in order. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than, than himself and they enter and dwell there and the last state of that man is worse than the first so shall it be with this wicked generation. In other words, what Jesus Christ was trying to teach us here is how wicked generations evolve. Saying, yes you lit a lamp to them Yes, the house was clean because when, when you know, it's like, uh, uh, have you ever, okay, I, I will assume that your houses don't have cockroaches, but have you ever entered a house that is full of cockroaches and you put on the light? I'm sure maybe it was your neighbors. Just, just think from, you know, maybe your neighbor, you know, I, because I know in your house there's no cockroach at the moja. There's none. But, but have you ever entered a house, you switch on the light, what happens? Man, just, within a few seconds they've all disappeared. You know that's what the light does, the light of, the, of God's word does? When, when, when that light is lit, guess what happens? Cockroaches disappear. The room is swept clean. 
All right? So sometimes when we preach this word, uh, especially those of you who are involved, especially in, uh, in evangelism and what of you, you preach the word, you bring the light, the room is cleaned. The problem is this. We rejoice about that one who came to the Lord and we thank God. But the problem is this, is that sometimes we fail to disciple them. So what happens? Sometimes people go back because nobody cared to sit them down and say, now that you're born again, this is how, this is what it means. That's why I've been insisting, and I've been telling my pastors here, that every month here in Sitam, Karen, we must baptize people. Whether they're two, whether the funny thing is that since January we've been baptizing quite a good number of them, because that is part of the process of discipling people. So those young people, Pastor Ian, who got born again, you must now call them and say, let me teach you what it means to be born again and disciple them. Because what happens is that it's one thing to be born again. But if that person is not discipled, when they begin to fall by the wayside, guess what happens? The enemy, this strong man who had been swept away, comes looking for somewhere. He, you know the enemy is always looking for where he may settle? So he comes and finds the room. Notice what the Bible says there. It had been swept and things were put in order. But now because it is empty, comes in, what does the Bible say there? And it says that, that the, he goes, makes with him, takes with him seven other spirits, worse than himself. <laughs> and they enter and they dwell there. And then the last state of that man is worse than the first. Isn't that scary? And that is why, listen to me, by the way. A lot of people who are extremely wicked in our culture today are people who, at one point or the other, answered an altar call. Did I tell you I went to, one time I went to ministry, just what, was it two years ago or something, so I went to Industrial Area Prison. And if you ever, prison ministry is powerful. In fact, we need to start going more to the prisons. So I, I, I go there, the men's remand prison there in uh, uh, so they give us opportunities. So I go there. I go there to preach to these men. And guess what? So I go there. So in my, in my little mind, I'm, assume, I'm assuming these are criminals. All right? So there is nowhere our paths could have crossed. Are you with me? So I'm the righteous one. I have come to, <laughs> to light the lamb, to bring some light to these brothers. And if you've ever seen people in their worst state, is in the prison system. So I come there. So as I began, as I began to share with them, so I asked them, so does anybody here, has anybody here, at that time I was in Sitam Buruburu, has anybody ever here uh, been to Sitam Buruburu? To my shock. <laughs> Actually, more than five of them. They said, yeah, pastor, we know you, Pastor Jesse. We were excited to see their pastor. To see their pastor. <laughs> now, that's one of the states. I wonder, do I get excited? <laughs> or does my heart break? Are you, are you with me? Because sometimes, sometimes we are so judgmental, we assume, ah, those are wicked people. What we don't realize. Can I tell you this, by the way? Do you know that some of the, especially the younger people who today are advocates of LGBTQ, do you know some of them grew up in the church? Where did, what happened to them? The enemy came and found their lives had been swept and everything was in order. But because nobody paid attention to them, nobody took time to disciple them. Nobody took time to tell them what this salvation is all about. They find themselves being occupied by other, other demons, you know, seven others which are worse. And suddenly, they create a generation of wickedness. Because see, if the enemy loses you once, he will ensure he will never lose you again. 
There's a lot of work to be done, friends. Are you still here? Moving on quickly. Let's go to the last one, the story of the parable of the lost son, the prodigal son. So Jesus continued. So the first two lessons, remember the first one? Sheep, foolishness. Coin, somebody lost the coin. The third one, Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered off in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and uh, he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am, starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He went to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. So notice, now this one is also interesting, this, this particular story, this particular parable, because this now involves a human being, the character of this lost son. Let's just look at him for a while. Notice, the son gets lost through his own free will. He makes his own choices. Notice, he comes to his father and says, give me my share of the estate. Uh, so out, nobody pushes him. Nobody enters it. He decides. The Bible says in James chapter 1 verse 12, Blessed is a man who endures temptation, for when he is approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But verse 14 he says this, But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full, brings forth death. So notice, for this son, he chooses. Isn't that what we do sometimes? Isn't that how sometimes we found ourselves lost? Because we chose to leave the fold of our father, to leave the home of our father, the loving father. And, 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 and then the son gets lost out of his own free will. And although he is the son of a father who loves him, and he's also an heir of his father, he sells, notice, he, uh, through his own choices, he goes and sells himself, hires himself out to a foreigner as a slave. Isn't that what we do? Isn't that what happens sometimes? We sell our own soul. People sell their own souls to the, to, to, to the enemy, the enemy of our souls. And eventually, the son, because of his choices, he becomes dispossessed of his inheritance. He loses his inheritance as long as he's away from home, and he is humiliated in the process. Remember, he's a Jew. Jews have nothing to do with pigs. But now, he hires himself out to look after, sheep, after, after pigs, and... Because nobody gave him anything even to eat, and there was famine in the land, he longs to eat what the pigs are eating. Complete humiliation. Not his father who humiliated him. Not God humiliated him. But because of his choices. Listen, friends, listen to me. The enemy has not even what good, one good intention against you or for you. His ultimate is to humiliate 
God's people. But then, when we are told when he comes to his senses, he chooses the same way he chose to live. Now he comes to his senses, he chooses to humble himself and go back to his father and ask for forgiveness. So the world humiliates him, but when he comes back to his senses, the Bible says he humbles himself. He says, I will go back to my father. You see, Psalm 95 verse 7 says, For he is our God and we are the, sheep of, uh, the people of his pasture, his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you hear his voice, and this is a, is a word to maybe somebody who is in this place this morning. Today, if you hear his voice, and I assure you you've already heard it, do not harden your heart. Come to your senses. But notice also, you cannot, you cannot end this story without talking about the heart of the father. His father, the father longs for his son to return home. Our heavenly father longs for his children to come back home. The father's hands are always wide, waiting to receive the son. Notice, when the father's, notice, it's like, it's like the picture here. So notice, when, when, when the father seemed like he was always so longing and waiting for his son to return home. But notice here, the father doesn't go out to look for his son. Why? Because the son chose to go. <laughs> you notice that? For the sheep, because the sheep is foolish, the shepherd goes looking. But for the son, he says, where you left me, you'll find me here. When you come to your senses, I'm right here. But the father in the meantime is longing for the return of his son, such that when he sees him, I imagine maybe he's just sitting out on his porch waiting, maybe this is the day that my son will come home. And when he sees him from a distance, he doesn't need to be told that's your son. He recognizes him from a far distance. And he, did, he does something that is, that is humiliating for a Jewish man. You know, in those days, they didn't wear trousers like we do. They used to wear those, what are they called in the Middle East, kafta or whatever. You know those long, long Middle Eastern, whatever, robes that men wear? So for him to run to his son, <laughs> he had to lift that gown. He's a real African man. You don't show your legs, your hairy legs. And he runs. Isn't that what Jesus did for us? Humiliated himself. Stripped naked on that cross. Why? For his son. For his daughters. Who were once lost. And he's always at the cross. And the crucifix as you see the arms of Jesus always stretched out friends those hands have never folded because he says come home my son come home my child so the father runs receives the son he bestows grace upon grace I don't know how many of you are that gracious as fathers Skijana went, you took your car, took your things, went and spoiled them out there. Now he's back home. Um, as, uh, sometimes as African fathers will probably downgrade their status a bit, isn't it? Until this boy learns responsibility. <laughs> but not this father. He restores him and bestows grace upon grace upon his son. And the father restores the status of his son who returns home. Isn't that what he has done? I said, isn't that what he has done? The heart of the father. He doesn't condemn. That's why the apostle Paul said, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. That it doesn't matter what we did. It doesn't matter how far I had fallen off. He says, son, daughter, I don't condemn you. 
you are mine. Every head bowed, every eye closed in this place as we bring this service to a close. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Very quickly, you've heard the word and you're saying, Pastor, give me an opportunity before we, you dismiss us, before you bless us. Give me an opportunity. You're saying, I want to be born again. I want to come to Jesus. I want to run to the arms of my father, saying, I'm a sinner. I am lost. I know I am lost. If that is you, I want to give you this opportunity. If you're there, you're saying, Pastor, pray with me. Just lift up your hand wherever you may be, whether you're in the balcony, whether you're all the way through the back, wherever you may be, just lift up your hand. Is there such a person? You're saying, Pastor, will you pray with me? Pray for me. I know I'm lost, but I want to receive Jesus. And we're looking around. Is there such a person? You're saying, I want to be born again. I want to be found. Like that prodigal son, you're saying, I'm coming to my senses and I've heard the voice of the Lord. And today I'm not going to harden my heart. Is there anybody? Is there anybody? And I hope, I hope we are not missing out on anyone. Lift up your hand. I see a hand right here. Is there somebody else? You're saying, Pastor, I'm also here. Thank you. Thank you. Can I ask, can I ask um, those of you who are lifting up your hand? Even if I did not see it, would you just rise up on your feet from wherever you are very quickly? Just stand up. Just stand up. Be upstanding. Just stand up on your feet. And I'm going to invite you. Would you just take another step of faith and just come? And just come and um, one of these pastors will receive you. Just, just come. Wherever you are, just come. Just come, gentlemen. Is there anybody else? You're saying, Pastor, here I am. Even if you do not lift up your hand, but you're saying... I don't want this service to end. I don't want to just walk out of this place the same way that I came. You're saying, I know I am lost. And you're saying, I've heard the voice of the Lord. I'm not going to harden my heart anymore. Please come. Because there is therefore no salvation except in the name of Jesus. Let's all rise up on our feet as we also receive this gentleman who is coming down. If you're still there, if you, you still have an opportunity, we are not closing this altar. So the opportunity is still there. You know you're lost. You know you're lost. Please come to the altar. Come to Jesus. You're not coming to me. You're not coming to sit him. You are coming to Jesus. As you confess him before these people, before this crowd, before these witnesses, he too will also confess you before our Father in heaven. Is there anybody else you're saying, Pastor, here I am. I'm going to ask these two, these two gentlemen who are here in front of us, would you just, um, I want to lead you in a prayer. Please just close your eyes and repeat this prayer. Just repeat it out loudly and believe it in your heart. Make it your prayer. Say, Dear Jesus, just out loudly, Dear Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for my sin I confess I am a sinner I have sinned against you please have mercy on me forgive me come into my heart and make me your child fill me with your Holy Spirit teach me your word teach me your ways thank you Jesus for saving me I am born again Father, thank you for these two gentlemen, dear Lord, who have prayed that prayer. And Father, we know that there are others, maybe who did not gather enough courage to come out and come to this altar. But Lord, you know them. You know them and your desire is that they will come to know you. We pray, may you keep drawing them to yourself, Lord, that even maybe before they leave this sanctuary, before they leave this service, Lord, they will still make that choice, make that decision. And, and, and invite you into their lives. But for these two gentlemen, Lord, we pray for them. You who has begun this good work, bring it to completion in Christ Jesus. We commit them to you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And God's people say, let's give the Lord a clap offering of praise. Amen, 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 amen. Have you received the word of the Lord? I said, have you received the word of the Lord? Our responsibility Let's go find that which was lost. And I charge you to go and find that which was lost for the sake of our Heavenly Father. So may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May He provide for your every need. 
May he give you rest from every trouble. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Turn to somebody and tell them, surely goodness. All the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. God bless you. Have a great week.